the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You join us on this Palm Sunday. This is uh, a sermon that will go with the Eucharist that um, has also been posted on, uh, on YouTube and Facebook, I hope. The Eucharist itself has two parts. It invites us on an imaginative journey to start off with. Um, first, we travel into Jerusalem with Jesus and the crowds on that first Palm Sunday, and then it invites us into a second part of an imaginative journey, travelling through Holy Week and then focuses on the end, at the Passion of our Lord, as told by Matthew in both cases. Matthew's Gospel focuses very much on the Jewish aspects of Jesus' life and his ministry. And uh, as Jesus arrives in Palm Sunday at the beginning of this Holy Week, he is there greeted by the Jewish crowds who hail him as the Jewish Messiah. But of course, um, some of the religious authorities are not so impressed. And during the course of the week, we realise that they are conspiring with the Romans to have him put to death. At the end of the week, he then goes to celebrate the Last Supper with his disciples. He is there in the upper room with them, giving them his flesh and his blood and the bread and the wine, these uh, gifts that will carry us through. And then he suffers and dies the following day. And at the Eucharist, we would have heard that reading as well this idea of Jesus standing before the governor, and the governor half-heartedly trying to release him, but the crowds around him insisting that he should be killed. And then at the end of the reading we heard, we had those words from the centurion, truly this man was the Son of God. As I said, Palm Sunday invites us on an imaginative journey, and it's one that uh, churchgoers are very familiar with. Some of you may have been able to experience Palm Sunday in different parts of the world, maybe on pilgrimage. If you're exceedingly lucky, you may have uh, been on pilgrimage in the Holy City, in Jerusalem itself at this time. You may have experienced that travelling through the streets with Jesus, the Stations of the Cross, that began in Jerusalem. And many people this week will, in their homes, travel with Christ on that imaginative journey on the journey of the Stations of the Cross. Others will be reminded of Palm Sunday's past. My own particular fond memory of Palm Sunday in the past was 15 years ago on Palm Sunday, celebrating it with uh, a huge number of people from the community in Blynavon, as the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, came to celebrate the bicentenary of St Peter's, the parish church in Blynavon. That morning, as we often did on Palm Sunday, we started off in the other church at the other end of town at St Paul's, and then we travelled down through the swirling mist, down the, through the town centre and to St Peter's, the parish church itself. It was an amazing experience, and one that I will never forget. And of course, maybe this Palm Sunday is also one that so many of us will never forget as we are unable to go to church, as that we are unable to join in the procession carrying our palm crosses, as we are unable to sing all those amazing hymns we sing with so much gusto as we walk around the inside or the outside of our churches. But still, we are invited this week to join in our hearts and in our spirits in this imaginative journey. We are there with Jesus at the Holy City, greeting him as not just the Jewish Messiah and Lord, but as our Messiah and Lord. As we travel through Holy Week, we experience him teaching the crowds in the temple as he did on that first Holy Week. We see him there at the Last Supper. We see him there hanging on the cross. And maybe his words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? resonate with us very powerfully this year. However, this isn't the end of the story by any means. Palm Sunday is focused not so much on Good Friday, but on Easter Day. As we travel this imaginative journey through Holy Week, we are travelling towards Easter Day itself. Jesus didn't just come to the Holy City to suffer and to die. He came to the Holy City 
to suffer, to die and to rise again. And that is where our focus should always be, on the risen Lord Jesus, who underwent suffering but triumphed over it and now leads his people into eternal life with him forever. So at the beginning of this Holy Week, I invite you to join us all in your hearts, in your homes, in your minds, on this imaginative journey. Through Holy Week, through Good Friday, through the cross, and then to the glories of Easter Day, which, of course, we shall be celebrating here once again next week, but which we celebrate in our hearts every day of our lives, every moment of our lives, and with every breath we take as we celebrate our living and loving Lord Jesus. Amen.